what is pollination? Quite simply, pollination is the transfer of pollen from one plant's anther to another plant's stamen. This allows the plant to reproduce. Pollination is carried out by pollinators. Wind and water actually do some pollinating, but 75% of the world's flowering plants are dependent on animal pollination from pollinators such as honeybees, bumblebees, hummingbirds, and even fruit bats. Pollinators are important to the foundation of our food source. Our food security is actually dependent upon pollinators because one out of every three bites in the human diet is directly or indirectly dependent upon animal pollination. So when you're enjoying things such as those lovely crunchy almonds or those yummy sweet oranges or a decadent steak, all of those things rely on insect or animal pollination in order for them to be possible. This is also important for our animals both here in the zoo and in the wild. We use a lot of the same fruits and vegetables that you see at the grocery store, so those would not be available for our animals here. And a lot of berries and some nuts and other kinds of fruits need pollinators also, so those are really important for animals in the wild that are part of their natural diet. We do limit the amount of fruit that we give our animals because they're high in sugar, but we use lots of vegetables in substitution. So vegetables like potatoes and onions and mustard greens and lots of different kinds of regular vegetables that you find at the grocery store are the ones that we use for our animals as well. There are all kinds of pollinators and of course the ones we think about the most are things like butterflies and bees. We have lots of butterflies and bees here at the zoo uh, all the time on zoo grounds and as you probably know we also have a butterfly exhibit that's uh, seasonal here at the zoo. Unfortunately we have not had it this year but typically we do have a seasonal butterfly exhibit as well and butterflies are one of the very well-known pollinators along with bees. There are a lot of other animals though that uh, we consider pollinators that are not thought of. There are uh, lizards that are pollinators. Mosquitoes are, you know, well known for making itchy bumps on your arms, but actually the males do not bite and the males uh, subsist on the pollen of plants. And so they are a fairly important pollinator of a lot of the species of plants that we have. When we have the butterfly house open to the public in the summer months, we do have a variety of butterflies that are native to the U.S. And we do have a variety of plants in the exhibit that produce a lot of nectar. Those butterflies will eat on that nectar from those plants. But especially early on in the season, before those plants are starting to bloom, we do offer them some alternative foods as well. Oftentimes we cut up fruit for them and they will lick that juice off of it. And then as these plants start blooming, the butterflies will oftentimes switch to the majority of their food items being the plants themselves. Pollinators face a few challenges. Some of them are habitat loss from the development of houses, roadways, and over manicured lawns, as well as improper use of pesticides. Pollinator corridors are especially important to those like the monarch butterfly. The monarch butterfly may have to travel up to 3,000 miles to overwinter in parts of Mexico, and they could definitely use the food and shelter along the way. There's lots we can do to help pollinators. Um, you know, one thing that pollinators need, just like any animal, is habitat. So sources of food and places to shelter and places to nest and lay eggs. So if you have a yard, um, you can convert part of your yard into a pollinator garden or even a pollinator pocket, uh, just a small patch of your yard. If you take out the ornamentals and take out the grass, you can turn it into a beautiful garden for pollinators. A really nice thing about having a pollinator garden in your own yard is that it attracts beautiful butterflies, beautiful moths, hummingbirds, things that are really fun to watch and welcome into our yards. Native plants support a lot more pollinators than non-native. Some of my favorite are butterfly weed, which is a nice orange flower, and blazing stars. Something important to remember when you're building a pollinator garden is to have plants that bloom from early spring all the way through the late fall. 
and these can be different plants. It's kind of like a puzzle where you put together the plants and their bloom time so that there's food and nectar for the pollinators throughout the entire season.